so today, um, what I'm going to talk about is what's the relevancy as you going into the news, this new frontier, which is IP enabled, uh, video surveillance. What are some of the things you need to uh, understand? I'm going to start out with kind of give a background. What are some of the drivers in, in pushing towards IP or what I call it converged environment? Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to kind of go through is I'm going to toss some terminology at you. Not that you have have had enough already, right? Uh, but some of the middle terminologies so that you understand. Um, at, at least when you're talking to some of the um, what Mo has called the, the network technicians, the network engineers, is that you will at least be able to understand how to communicate. Because uh, you don't want to be talking apple to orange. Right? And sometimes uh, on these smaller environments, you may not have the luxury of working with a uh, network technicians. So what are you going to do? You have to do some troubleshooting yourself. So I'm going to cover some of the common problems you can see. And hopefully you're going to at the end of this uh, session, you can have a good understanding of some of the factors uh, and the criteria needed for a successful deployment for a IP surveillance system. Next. Um, this is just a quote from Fox Research, and he says, <coughs> physical security environments have been dominated by analog standalone systems for a long time, and with limited interconnectivity in communications and interconnections. <coughs> so what that means is, up until, up until this point, if you take a look at the left hand side, which is kind of like the silo approach of a system deployment for, from a building perspective. So I have a standalone networking, right? Allow people to communicate with one another, desktop connected. I have a standalone um, fire alarm system that's not integrated with anything. I have a standalone video surveillance that's closed circuit TV, um, a standalone HVAC. Okay, so building control is separate. Um, well, that's all great, but now um, the technology is here, especially with the economy stimulus plan. There is a lot of investments that the government is making, right, in, front, in the perspective of transportation, transportation security, in the perspective of public safety and security, in the perspective of green, right, because saving. Saving the environments and being more green is one of the factors now because the fuel cost is so high. What does that have to do with having an integrated system? Right. Today, what I can do is with my badge here for Cisco, I can go anywhere within the world in the Cisco company. It doesn't matter whether I go to my local office in Berlin or I go across the uh, town to San Jose will hop across the little pod um, to Shanghai, right? My badge access will get me into the office and provide me with proper credentials needed, okay? What that means is, now if I have my certain AC settings, like I'm at, I like my office code, when I go into my Shanghai office, right, the system will automatically change the temperature to accommodate what my normal working environment is, right? That may be different from somebody else that's working my colleagues. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> one of the challenges with the silo environments is, today we have fire alarm. That's kind of, it works really well as a standalone system. But when there's incident happen, what happens? You have no way of <coughs> letting the responder, knowing that how many people are actually trapped within the building. Okay, now, um, where are they located? If it's a large building like this, where are they located? Well, that's all, all, that, that's all the important factor of having a converged network so that when I go into my office, right, this building knows that I'm here. It sets the room temperature to what I'm most comfortable in. It allows me access to the resources that I'm allowed to access, right? And the key tracks of it, of I'm not doing any unlawful information uh, activities by maybe potentially taking out a servers or a piece of important hardware out of, it, out of the building or area that I'm not supposed to. So I'm connecting the different pieces of the building together. So I'm also <coughs> connecting my badge access into my HVAC. I'm connecting the 
access operations into my middle space so that building has a record of me going in and out of the building. Now if I'm a high rise, right, so certain floors, maybe I'm off the material. Right? So the badge access, when I badge in, the elevator will take me up to the proper floor that I have out without access to. And then at the same time, it has a record of my location exactly at any given time. So that allows the first responder to have an accurate view of what's going on within the building when they need to um, response to incidents. Moreover, is it allows me to get an accurate view if I'm the first responder via the video surveillance systems. I can have a real time picture of what's going on through my IP phone or another IP phone, cell phone, right? Because most of you are not carrying around a nice gadget called to HP enabled mobile device. So I can get a very good picture of at any given time. I need to understand what, my, what situation I'm walking into. I turn on my cell phone, I get a real time feed through the 3G network. I'd be able to say, okay, there's a hotspot here for fire, or there's a burglary going on and they're armed. So I can prepare myself as I'm going into a situation. Okay? And that's all part of the economy stimulus plan that, uh, that our uh, president is putting in. Okay? And we have a team, along with a lot of large companies, that's you know, kind of dissecting and seeing exactly where does that fall. But I'm just giving you a heads up. So that's why um, this is important to you. What control system does Cisco use for their systems integration, building integration? Um, that's a very good question. Um, Cisco actually have, has a program called a Connected Real Estate. Um, what it does is actually we offer our own um, system that we developed and acquired and um, that actually does integrations between cameras and cameras, legacy cameras, um, IP cameras, um, and have a connection to batch access. Right? I'd be able to have, um, just recently made an acquisition called Richard, actually I forgot the company, but that does kind of like a middleware translations between different systems. The issue here is what's outlined by Bill is that currently each camera vendor um, has their own proprietary system set up. Um, Panasonic, <coughs> we talked to um, some other income, uh, Sony, for example. So they have a Having a middleware to translate that is what uh, we're focusing on. We're not necessarily talking <coughs> about the endpoints so much, even though we have them all on camera. But we're focusing on how can we glue this, you know, kind of like siloed infrastructure into one seamless environment. Kind of very similar to um, the statements that we made um, about eight years back, where traditionally, you know, we have a legacy uh, system. What I call legacy is <coughs> hot storage, telephones, right? It's all TDM based, time, time domain. Uh, and when our CEO comes out and says, you know, in certain years, voice is going to be a free, it's going to be a commodity. Okay. Eight years later, people are making free phone calls across the ocean to their relatives, to their friends, right, over Skype or uh, uh, at the uh, MSN messengers for free. They're getting videos to be able to communicate for free, right? And that's what Converge Network will, will bring to the table is that it will allow us the communication much easier. So same thing is happening on the on the building real estate side. Now, if you look at this diagram, I mean, I'm breaking up the, the this whole integration system into several layers. So at the very bottom, this is what you guys are dealing with day to day. Right? This is the IP camera, this is the end systems, the server, the stores, and then the connectivity is what they're starting to change. So changing it from, from is the coax environments that you guys are most comfortable with, right? and some fiber environments. So now we're opening up that landscape with ethernet, right? basically a really thin piece of wire. Uh, and then you also have the opportunity of using wireless. That allows me to uh, bypass the restrictions of right away. So a lot of times when I need to trench across a, a highway to connect two buildings together, I run into issues of right away. Right? So with wireless, I get away with that. Bill mentioned that earlier. 
then the, the axis is how, you know, how does these